All right, I got you your blueberries, uh -huh. your orange juice, uh -huh. your paper towel, your chapstick. Thank you. Are you finally ready to go here? Maybe. <laughs> uh, you are a spoiled princess. Thank you. You bandito. I gotta get in there, buddy. We gotta make movies. Yeah, I did you. I did you, I did you. Hey, guys. Yo. Yo, it's been a while. I feel out of practice. But um, we've got a lot to go over today. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a pretty awesome show and tell. we got some 10 good questions pulled from uh, both YouTube channels. This one and AEAC Home. So, yeah. Let's get right <clears throat> to it. Yeah, we don't want to talk about COVID or no. the, heat, the heat wave in Florida. No. <laughs> Florida just closed all the bars. COVID's still here. And today, it's, statewide. As expected, it's really hot in Florida. Because we had a huge spike. And it's been 98 degrees every day for the last 10 days with about 105 to 110 heat index. It's Florida. So I think I lost some neurons. If I'm coming across a little slower than usual. And I've been outside in it working. Finding out cool stuff for us. It's been useless. Yeah. Which is ironic because you just brought me like blueberries and chopstick. What's orange. been useless? I've been useless? Yeah. We got you missed it. Piss on your useless. All right. Um, you show, ready? Show and tell. <clears throat> okay, you go first. Okay. Um, if you guys have been following me on AEAC Instagram, Hooked on Air... Or er AEAC <laughs> Kill the Plant. AEAC Facebook. AEAC or Argon Exploration Advancement Channel. Or over at the Argon Nation Forum. Sticky topic over there. You'll know that I've been two weeks now working on this. Whoa. <clears throat> Some of you are getting a little bit frustrated that I've been sharing so much information and pictures in those three outlets but haven't gotten to the vlog yet, and that's because I'm still learning. If you don't know what this is, this is the Air Venturi Avenger. This is a $300 pre-charged pneumatic. What makes it special is that it's got a 4,351 PSI, 180 cc air tube with an externally adjustable regulator through that screw right there and an externally adjustable hammer spring. And I suspect that not all of you have been privy to the work I've been putting in and what I've been sharing in those three outlets, but long and short of it is, I've got three custom AEAC tunes now. Sorry, this is getting a little close to your head. No, I've been watching it. You've been like almost <laughs> knocking me out four times. <laughs> I've done my own due diligence and come up with three custom AEAC tunes, an AEAC Power Tune, an AEAC Pro Tune, and an AEAC Eco Tune for this gun, and I've shared them over there in all three places. And the mind-blowing thing is, this is a 22 cal. On my Power Tune, I've got 50 regulated shots, averaging 42 foot-pounds of energy. Okay, on a power tune. On the Pro Tune, which I called it the Pro Tune because if you guys go to EBR, RMAC, Pyramid Air Cup, a lot of people aren't privy to this, but the guys that are in the winter, winter circle are pushing their Diablo shaped pellets to the 850 foot per second range, and everybody tends to you know, stretch on that velocity. But um, I came up with one that's about an 858 foot per second average with a JSB 18 grain which puts it right at 30 foot-pounds, 97 regulated shots. And I'm talking extreme spreads like in the 22 foot per second range, standard deviation of less than five out of that little air tube for 300 bones. In the EcoTune, I grabbed a, a JSB 16 grain and I pushed that to 117 regulated shots. Again, with extreme spread at 22 feet per second, for 25 foot-pounds of energy. So if you guys know 22s, the best 22s are in that 25 to 30 foot-pound range. I like 25 foot-pounds-ish because it really keeps the flip down and it makes them really fun and easy to shoot accurately. But uh, if you head on over to the Airgun Nation forum and look at the sticky topics under all topics, you'll see it right there at the top if you want to see all the work. But that was a gigantic 
undertaking. Yep. It's 300 bucks, right? So, you know, <laughs> you got some plastique, but it's powerful. It's nice. It's powerful. It's it accurate. Nice. It's highly tunable. From my time with it, it's got an excellent regulator. It's very responsive to any input that I give it as far as what I want it to do. I like the moderator. That's a zero dB moderator. It's pretty. That comes from Air Guns of Arizona. It's pretty. Donnie FL made the, makes the adapters for these guns. It just basically threads into the shroud here. The gun OEM stops right here. Hey, what's a tune? What's a tune? I mean, I get it, but like, what consists of a tune? <clears throat> what consists of a tune is when you get the gun, the owner can change um, the parameters of the regulator. Uh -huh. which controls how much pressure the valve sees. Uh -huh. and, they, and they can control the parameters or how much um, tension that hammer spring is under by pressurizing or depressurizing a spring. Uh -huh. It's got about five and a half turns of um, adjustability on this hammer spring. And this regulator, I'm, I'm, I've had phenomenal success with it at 1,400 PSI. So it's like a setting for the pressure. Yep. Yeah, it controls the air that the valve is going to see. And the regulator goes up to like 2,900 or 3,000 PSI. So I won't get into too much detail. I've already put all the information out there for you. Just check out any of those outlets and it's there. But, um, you know, that's just part of the story. The other part of the story is that this thing is a slug lover. The new JSB knockouts, both the H&N Sport slugs, the 217 and the 218, like five or six different Nielsen specialty ammo slugs. It like the FX hybrids. It loves JSB redesigns. I feel like you're it, giving away too much. It loves the JSB 15 grain and 18 or 16 grain and 18 grain. It loved the H&N pile drivers and the rabbit magnums, which I've never been able to get any gun to group with ever. This one loves both of them. So this is just a freak of nature that I think is going to turn the air gun industry on its head. And it's side cocking. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like this little handle. Like yeah. This little design. Yeah. Like, that's it's, cute. It's re and it's really light. If you go low on the, the, the tune that's on here right now is the Eco Tune, which is a 16 grain to about 840 for 25 foot pounds by 117 shots. And what's nice about that, real nice low reg pressure, nice low um, hammer spring pressure, which makes the cocking. Oh, it's so, so, so. Can you just shoot it so I can get that like out of the way? I can decock it. So yeah, decock it. It's done. Okay, good. Yeah, and the trigger's good. So you know, guys, there's, there's no way for me to say this other than for me to just say it. This thing is blowing my mind. Comes with a ten-shot magazine, single shot no. tray. Damn. Oh, you lost your blueberries. Don't move. Blueberries. Don't move. I got them. Oh, shit. You kind of got them. I got them. This is nice. I mean, it's plastic, but it like it looks nice. Yeah, it's interesting. Like with all of the um, FX and Daystate tuning vids out there by YouTubers, there's like a huge audience that wants to get into tuning air guns and learning how. And I have had every bit as much fun tuning that thing this as I have the Continuum and the Impact. It's re go ahead. heavy though. Like this it, is not well. A it's actually not. Lot. If you take off the bipod and you take off the scope, that's a six pound deal. Oh really? And it's eight pounds with the scope and mounts. The bipod's what's making it exp uh, heavy. How heavy is that bipod? The high, bipod's heavy. That's ridiculous. There, there it is without the bipod. Okay, let me try it. Does it come with this little? Ring? Yeah, it's it's molded in. Oh yeah. So yeah. Air Venturi has oh, just dude. taken it to a whole new level. That's so weird. With it, this which, thing, like it's not really that heavy on it by itself, but when you put it at an angle well, look, like that. Do you remember how much fun you were, you were, remember you when you were doing this? Oh, this is that one? This is I do one. like that one. <laughs> look how fast I got that gun back. <laughs> so much fun. So that's show and tell number one. Um, I'll have the vlog. I'll probably start the vlog Monday. I think I've learned everything I, I want to learn right now about this and I'm pretty much ready to go, but it's been two hard weeks of learning so I, so I could know where I'm at before I get on camera for you guys with it. But that's a good that's a good reader's digest version. This is like a really well made bipod. I mean it's a hundred percent metal it looks like. Well that's a nice bipod. That that's bipod nice I think bipod. costs as much as that gun. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. And here I am like Made in America. Right. Yeah, take two coast. All right, pass me pass me that black do hit do hickey. I was gonna ask you something about that Avenger. Yeah. I can't remember what it is. 
300 bucks though? I know. I know. I know. Oh, are you going to keep it? I'm absolutely going to keep it. It's funny, actually. This is a review, discuss, win over at the Argonation Nation forum. So I called. We're I called. It. I called Air Venturi and I was like, y'all are going to have to send a new gun to the winner because I'm keeping this one. Yeah, um, this is the first time I've ever asked to keep a gun in this price point. 300 bucks. It's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. I mean, like, 300 bucks is like. Triggers a pound and a half, dual stage. I mean. It's unbelievable. That's like three it's dinners out. And they're going to sell these things like Snickers bars. Mm. I guarantee it. If the reliability winds up being there, a lot of people are going to have a good time with that gun. Faux show. Faux show. Okay. Right. No, no, pass me the black thing first. Oh, okay, what's the black thing? So if oh, you this is another barrel? Yeah. Is it like a barrel frame? What is it, honey? I can see the rail. And I see the little stick thingy. I think it's... Don't, spo don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Is so, it like a barrel cover? Huh? Is it a barrel cover? Here. So if you guys haven't, um, if you guys aren't aware yet, Hatsan is a brand that um, moves a lot of product through 8YAC. This channel and the primary one, if you're new around here, I have two YouTube channels. This is the little baby channel, like kind of classroom impromptu. You're jumping ahead of things over there. Yeah. Just stand by. No. Stand by. No. Stand by. No. Yes. So it's becoming very popular to be able to interchange barrels in air guns. And FX has kind of led that way with all of their products. Streamline, Streamline, Crown, Continuum, Wildcat. And Hotson has kind of jumped on that bandwagon and done something really, really cool. So if, um, if you hang out with me, you'll know that I'm a huge advocate of the Hotson Flash and Flash Pup. Mm -hmm. You're basically three, four hundred dollar ish price range on two pre-charged pneumatics that um, did very well for me in uh, my reviews of them. And so Hotson has brought to you guys prop, prop me, what? prop me. What? Oh, this. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> They've brought to you guys oh recently. Oh my god. Okay. The Hotson Hydra. Now, if this upper half or if the, the engine looks familiar, it's because it's got the guts of the Flash in it. So if you liked what you saw in the Flash and Flash Carbines review, that's what this Ooh, is. I like these. I love these little, love the cocking levers yep. that look old school. In a, in a pretty stock, okay? But what they've done differently is now, and your sub 450 price point here, now you can own one gun as you do with the Botiki brands and you can swap through the calibers. They have 177 available, 2225. And this is the funky thing. Now you can open that. I just realized something. This um I was looking at this gun earlier and it looked crooked. It looked like this barrel was sticking out further yeah, than the gun, but it's an optical illusion because of the angle of yeah. this thing. Yep, it's pretty oh, slick. It's oh, nice, oh. it really breaks up the lines of the gun. Okay, this is gonna be messy. Yeah, well. We can get the vacuum cleaner out. So what you can do now with these Hydras, guys. Oh, you can swap it out. Yeah. You literally, it, it's as simple as unscrewing this guy in the back here. And I'm guessing I need to get something in there to unscrew it. Yep, for sure. And then what happens is you have contained in here, like let's say, for example, a 177 barrel comes on here. You have contained in here, like let's say this is a 2.2. I don't know what it is. It's a 2.5. You can slap the 2.5 on here, and contained in here is the 2.5 transfer port. Contained in here is the 2.5 hammer spring. And so you don't have to get in, I, I'm assuming, you don't have to get into all of the tuning when you swap between 17722 and 25. And this here is sub 200 bucks. So what that means to the end user is you can buy the gun, let's say, for 450 in 2.2, and for sub 200, you can add a 2.5 barrel kit. And you literally unscrew this, drop this down, screw it back on, and that is all there I mean, is to it. I mean, you're basically buying a new gun every time you buy a new barrel and for less than 200 Exactly. Bucks. You don't have to buy three guns. You can literally yeah. buy one gun and then swap these guys. And I'm looking at it. It is a little bit longer, probably to develop um, a little bit more power. Is it a little bit longer? Maybe it's not. It looks the is same. Is it the same? Never mind. It's the same. So they've, they've upped it then with hammer spring and uh, transfer port. But... Um, 
That's the Hatsan Hydra. If you want to know the guts of it, like I said, check out those videos on AEAC Home of the Hatsan Flash Carbine and Pup. But then they kind of took it to a whole nother level. And look how pretty this is. This thing's beautiful. Nice Monte Carlo ambidextrous stock. This is Turkish Walnut. It's got the Quattro trigger in it, like all the other Hatsans, the QE moderator. So that ought to be nice and quiet. And if you guys don't know Hatsan, these things are fantastic. They're inexpensive, they're reliable, they're accurate, they have good triggers, they make good power. When I say accurate, 50 and 100 yards all day long, okay? So, which brings us full circle. Yes, to what is to that? this. Look at this, guys. What is, what is it? This is Hatsan's new arrow barrel. Uh-huh. <laughs> you see that on the bottom, that, that guide? Yeah. The arrows are hollow. Oh, for, like for an guns. actual arrow, arrow barrel. It, it'll, oh. it'll slip. The arrow slips over that guide. And then you can fire arrows from this. And, and I'm presuming these two little, like, gnome cap things right here are for holding. They're arrow holders. Arrow holders. And here, hold this for a second. I, I, I'm covered in styrofoam. Well, Being attacked. And it's got these flip-up sights, which I don't know how to use. I guess you just unscrew this. No, you, then don't, you, put you don't the even arrow have to in the front, it. like you put it down. The you just barrel. slide, you slide it down here. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, these sights uh. actually just flip up. These screws were to move the sights on the Weaver rail that's integrated. Holy shit! Oh, that's that is cool. going to be seriously fun. And look how bad ass that looks. I don't feel too bad for not knowing what that was. Look at that freaking thing. Ha <laughs> ha ha! That's going to be a good time. It's going to be nice. Should be nice and lightweight too because you don't have to put a scope on there. These sights should be all you need for like bow hunting. Yeah, because most of that's pretty close range. So for 450 bucks, guys, this is kind of really freaking me out too. It's very so utilitarian. It's been a double freak out kind of month. And I wanted to do some show and tell and share it with you before we got to, uh, got to some questions. So this is in the queue. If ever you guys want to know what's on deck and arrived or inbound for review, just hit me up on my website, aecaonline.com, and you will be in the now. Dot com. Dot com. Yep. A little bolt action dealio. Oops, I think my safety's on. My safety was on. But yeah, huts on Hydra, guys. 450 bones. They're going to sell a lot of those things. Cool. That's a sweet, sweet-ass gun. Can I cock it? You can. Do I have to then fire it? I would decock it until I make sure that it's not loaded. What, just put it back? Is so, that decocking? Nope. So what you do is um, open up the bolt again. Hey, just had it. Okay. Keep rearward pressure on it. Okay. Okay, and squeeze the trigger. Hold the trigger and gently release it forward. Now you're decocked. Oh. Because you release the spring, but you're controlling yeah. the... The return of the spring to its original oh, position. Oh, I like the way this one. It's lighter. I know. I think it's sweet. It's nice. It's sweet. Adjustable um, butt pad. Butt pad. It's nice. Oh, that stock is badass. I like it. So, um, great job, Hatsan. That'll, so anyway, there'll be AEAC vlog on that, AEAC home on that, full reviews. It's coming. It's coming. You ready? I am ready. Where's That's my good, water? Because I have to pee. Do you want me to pause it while you go pee? No, I, can't, I think I can hold it. All right, let's do it. Okay. Your reader's questions. Here we go. My feet are a size seven and a half. It's going to look like I have goblin feet when I put <coughs> them on the couch. They were seven and a half US. Quit asking me. Yeah, there's a 10 millimeter ultra wide angle lens on that camera, guys. And it makes everybody's it makes everybody's stuff seem a lot longer when you move it closer to the lens. <laughs> okay, you ready? Who wants to see Feet that? Feet included. Who wants to see that? Okay, this question is from Superior CBD Hemp Oil. It's actually kind of a clever name. Like if you're trying to advertise something, um, it's about your Benjamin Marauder .25 video. It's in the Benjamin Marauder. It's .25. in the Benjamin Marauder .25 video. Nice shooting text. 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 Nice shooting text. You sold me on the Marauder. What scope would you recommend? Great video. Thank you. I like light. I like small and light when it comes to scopes, guys. I like 40 millimeter bells more than I like 50 millimeters. I like 3 to 10s and 3 to 12s more than I like 5 to 15s and 8 to 25s and all these crazy things. Anytime you see me in a video reviewing at 50 and 100 yards on the other channel, 
that's always at 10x. And so I, I tend, and you see the results I get across all different brands and price points. So I've never really been one to over magnify because I like to keep the weight down. I'm very sensitive to the size of the scope appendage on an air gun. What's like, the advantage of over magnifying? Speaking of that, I'll tell you in a second. This is Hawk's new um, Vantage SF something WAIR, WASFIR. It's an ultra wide angle lens on the scope. It's like 21% wider than other scopes with a 50 millimeter bell that are a 4 to 16. But uh, we'll get into that more, more later. But I like smaller scopes. I've had good luck with Hawk, Optison. Um, Mostly Hawk and Optison. I've had good luck on Springers with Virau scopes. I've got some MTC here to do. Oh, I've had good luck with Aztec. Aztec are good scopes. Aztec Optics. And those are the brands that get sent to me by those companies. So that's kind of what I tend to cycle through. But um, if I'm buying a scope, I'm going to get the smallest scope that I can get where I can get the job done. And it's normally going to be a 3 to 10 range or a 3 to 12 and it's going to have a 38 to 42 millimeter bell on it. What's the difference? Um, so if you are shooting like field target and you really need to magnify, uh -huh. you, have, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. can see better in closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so people will magnify them 25 times as opposed to when I review them. The way I see it is if I do all my reviews at 10x, just okay. magnified 10 times, then you guys should get better, should be able to hypothetically get better results when you do your 15 and 20 and 25x. It's almost like a buffer, oh. you know, I use to yeah. kind so of like... It's a baseline. It's a, to mellow my shooting performance. Because yeah. when you shoot every day for a living, you, you kind of get good at it. Oh, true. And so that's it's not a little to bit be, more universal. That's not to be boastful, but that's just, it would happen to anybody. So I, it's one of the things I do to, to soften that, that accuracy. We really got to vacuum this. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's right. okay. But uh, yeah, those those brands. Oh, and Element, Element Optics. Oh, they yeah. have the Helix, which is their four hundred dollar price point. I was supposed to get that two weeks ago. I don't know where it is. That should be a good one. But uh, any of those, I've had good luck with. And Hawk. Let's keep in mind I have to pee. Hawk. You said Hawk. Okay. Do I say Hawk? <laughs> yes. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Told you it was hot out this week. This is from Green Truth 420. Also a marijuana reference. How many of these did you pick? This is kind of funny. <clears throat> um, it was on your FX Impact 0.25 video. I need big help with... I need big help. My, par my pellets are spiraling. Holy shit. I stopped knowing how to read. Um, I need big help. My, par my parrots are spiraling. <laughs> <laughs> my pellets are spiraling. I have tried now with 4,000 pellets. Holy crap. Pellets. I have tried from 70 bar to 140 bar reg pressure and tr tried adjusting the hammer tension and tension screw from min all the way to max in small increments. I have the power plenum and external 40cc plenum, bigger reinforced valve seat, 600 millimeter slug liner, King Heavy's MK2 and NSA 33.5, tried around 600 and 880 foot pounds foot FPS, FPS feet per second feet per second i have tried what, what everything what are those two feet per seconds again 600 slash 880 okay i have tried everything and i'm still getting spiral pellets when i shoot into the air i have mm. tried two slug liner a's it seems it gets a lot better at lower reg pressure i'm now at mm. 65 bar and shooting 835 f feet per second and consistently with King Heavy and NSA 33.5. Also pretty accurate at 30 meters with a half inch group. I've watched all the videos and I own the impact for two years. So I do know how to tune. I just can't seem to get rid of spiraling pellets through the air. Mm. I have tried with and without moderator. I see all these long range videos in slow-mo and the pellets fly true. Yeah. Mine go around in a funny spiral sometimes. Mm -hmm. Any pointers would be much appreciated. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I've seen it too. And what he, what he means when he says spiral, of course, all projectiles spiral. spiral like a football because yeah. they're coming out of a rifle yeah. type barrel. But you get corkscrewing, which is where, where you can shoot up into a blue sky. 
and oh. you'll see the you'll see the projectile just you it's know like a big spiral yeah big yeah, yeah. typically actually i've seen them tight too just i've seen them do this all the way to 50. Mm. um it messes up your accuracy sometimes well then why do you want to fix it if it well doesn't here's the way here's the weird thing like i've seen them i've seen them spiral into a half inch group at I'm saying spiral now, like him. I've seen him corkscrew into a half inch group at 50. I've seen him corkscrew into a couple of loops in an inch and a half at 100. Um, so it's it's not always a problem for me, but I get what he's saying. He wants his to fly true, and that's something I normally look for. Um, if I'm getting corkscrewing, the first thing that jumps into my head is wrong projectile for that barrel. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I try different projectiles until I find one that's stable. Mm -hmm. If I find, if I do all that work and I find one that's flying true, and you'll see it when it flies true, but every once in a while, it's, it, it does one of these. Mm -hmm. That tells me that I may have a, tells me a couple of things. Maybe my speed is off. Um, and slugs... I've had great luck with slugs from 750 to 1,000 feet per second. Hmm. That's the window, and it doesn't seem to matter, as long as the slug is happy in that barrel. Uh, across all those brands you mentioned, the FX, the NSA, um, just the H&Ns, I'm just starting to experiment with the, the JSB knockouts. But um, So you think it's a, you think it's a pellet? Although we, I don't... It's it's usually that the projectile doesn't like that barrel. If it if if I can get one to like the barrel, and then I see it happen every once in a while, there's usually a problem with the barrel. Like there's a high spot or a low spot up around the choke end, maybe where some lead is built up, and or maybe not enough lead has built up. Um, and so I've I've had them where sometimes you got to fire them a hundred times to get that right, and then it just goes away. And then some are clean, or some you clean a barrel and shoot twenty times, and then it's just perfect and it, and it goes. But I would say if you're in that velocity, and you've tried all of the different pellets and slugs for those barrels, and you're still getting it, I would say that the barrel is not in the state of cleanliness that it wants to be. Um, that's why you talk to some air gunners, and they'll shoot like a thousand shots through those things, and mm -hmm. they're still accurate. Some clean them fresh and they're accurate. You just got to figure out what your barrel wants. And if you're, if you're the, and I don't know, I'm just guessing, but maybe he, maybe he cleaned it every hundred times or maybe he cleaned it every 300 shots. And this is one of those barrels that wants a thousand before it starts flying them true. Well, he said he tried with 4,000 pellets, but it doesn't say he's, tr how many pellet types he's tried. And it doesn't say how often he's cleaned and what he's cleaned with. Yeah. I know firsthand there's a lot of cleaning kits that don't do a good job. The only one that I've found that does a, a an exemplary job is the Patchworm by 2020 Concepts. That's the best $8 an air gunner can spend. That thing with Ballastol has pulled stuff out of barrels that I've pulled boar snakes through, pushed mm -hmm. patches through with deweys, with, with crawl. I mean, heavy-duty shit. Put some ballastol on a patch with a patchworm, and it'll find stuff that those weren't. So it sounds like your suggestion is to clean it with a patchworm and ballastol. Yep. And to, season it twenty-five times. And to try different pellets. Not sure if you're pretty. Work through that. different ammos. That you don't have to go crazy with the velocity. Just get in that seven fifty to a thousand window, and it shouldn't matter too much. Um, it doesn't really matter what the reg pressure is, what the hammer springer is, other than that can be a detractor from your repeatable accuracy because you can start getting into crazy flip and harmonic deals. You do want to find the sweet spot between reg and hammer so that the gun's shot cycle is settled. But that shouldn't contribute to corkscrewing. It's a tough, I mean, I, I've never had one that I couldn't fix by finding, like, never. And I get my hands on a lot of cheap guns and a lot of good ones. I've never had one that I couldn't fix by either finding the right ammo mm -hmm. in, it, in the right window and getting that barrel in the state of cleanliness that it wants to shoot stable far mm -hmm. at 100 yards. Can you buy sample packs? I'm just thinking you yeah. have a lot of ammo. Yeah, you can buy sample but packs. But I imagine it would get really expensive to buy a full can of, like... 
a hundred. It gets super. Well, that's their them. challenge. That's one of the reasons I call all these guns with all the different brands of ammo to give them some sort of guidance. You know, so I before... guess see if Steve's done a video on it and what ammo he used in the video and start there. I mean, you can look at the FX Crown Continuum vid I just did. Between those two barrels, there was, you know, it loved JSB pellets and it loved uh, JSB and NSA and, the, and, N, and JSB and NSA and um, mm -hmm. FX hybrid slugs. Yeah. Let us know how it goes, Green Truth. Yeah, man. Good luck. That's Give a, it a shot. That's a tough one. <laughs> Give it a Give shot. Give it a shot. But eventually that barrel should get dirty, dirty enough and let it up enough where, where it won't do that. And if it doesn't do it when it's clean and then it starts doing it, then you'll know that that barrel kind of yeah. wants to live in a cleaner area. But some barrels just want to be a pig pen. <laughs> like this this thing wants to be a pig. I can put a thousand shots through this and it shoots as accurate. Yeah. It's a, it's a, this barrel's freaky, man. I don't know what. Yeah. So start fresh. Clean it. Uh, start Patchworm with and ballastol. Start with the pellets that Steve does when he reviews that particular gun and try the different pellets. If it's an, I mean... Um, I think we FX covered. builds its barrels around the JSB products and also the FX hybrid products. So if I'm him, I'm there. buying a JSB redesign and I'm buying FX hybrids and I'm just, I'm going to live in that area to try to cure my corkscrewing woes. Good advice. Yeah. Cure my corkscrewing woes. woes. Okay, this is from SVT Snake. It is posted to your FX Crown Continuum Point Two Two video. I hope you reviewed the Evan X Max Air Semi Auto Air Rifle. Three exclamation points. <laughs> I'd be excited about that too. So Evan X is not one of the brands that um, I'm friendly with. Mr. Lee, the owner, um, we talk at the international trade shows and we email once every year or two. <laughs> He's on all my quarterly mailers to the industry so you know I'm keeping him in the loop but he's just never really wanted to send product through AEAC I think his guy is Rick Usler uh, Air Gun Web that's where he sends all his product um, he sends a lot also to um, Rick Ream Shooter 1721 so they might have something there yeah I'd check out those two outlets he likes those guys and that's cool because obviously I'm just one guy I can't be everything to everybody anyway True. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I just, I don't do anything with Evanix. The door's open. But... Come on in. Okay, you ready? Yep. Marcelo Alibera. It was posted to your FX um, factory tour. Good morning. FX air guns have plans to come to Brazil? Question mark. Thank you. Um, FX air guns is in Brazil. So I got a buddy by the name of Marcus. He's MPLA air guns. In Brazil, um, he, from what I know of his character and his customers, he takes good care of customers. And from what I know of him um, in talking to the air gun manufacturing brands that sell to him for you guys in Brazil, he's a solid stand-up dude. So I would check out MPLA air guns in Brazil for FX. That all being said, I called FX and asked them that question for you and they're really having a lot of challenges in brazil because brazil puts just gigantic tariffs oh. on like just ridiculous tariffs on these air guns that are coming in so it's really hard for dealers there to be successful and to be profitable you know it's got to make sense for the dealer as much as it yeah. does yeah for uh for the consumer that all being said brazil's going through a lot of change right now you know, in its in its government and in its leadership, so maybe that'll lift going forward. But I'd check out a, a but FX. You know, check out Marcus at MPLA, and FX does have its finger on the pulse there, and they very much want to be part of what's going on in yeah. Brazil. It's just hard to get dealers to want to be a part of air gunning in Brazil because of the heavy tariffs. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yep, and they've actually been to Brazil. Yeah. John Tuller went and visited. We should go to Brazil. Yeah, Abrigado, for the purpose of Marcelo. the brand. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay, next question. Handy Gent 45. Come on over, Handy Gent. I have a feeling I got some house projects for you. <laughs> um, this was posted to the Wyrow HW35E.177 blog. Wyrow. 
Viral. 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 I still have some people in the audience coming and correcting me on how to say that, but I have now spent time with Mr. Hans Viral. Viral. In person. Multiple times. Very German. And I ask him, how do you pronounce your name? Because everyone tells me I have it wrong. Viral. Viral. <laughs> Does he do the hand gesture? <laughs> no. But that's how you say <laughs> that's it. That's your addition? <laughs> okay, this question. Here we go. At Mark 604, he mentions barrel drop. That phrase is so wrong. So inaccurate. Droop. Droop. Oh, no, but he misspelled it too. It's droop. Okay, well, listen. I can only read what is sent to me. Yeah, no, this isn't. Okay. That phrase is so wrong. I got to pee. And so inaccurate. What droops is the breech block. The droop is due to the mating of the breech block and the piston tube. Bam. Okay, so he's correcting me in that video. I think so. Yeah. It sounds sounds like he's made a statement. Yes, there is no question there. Yeah, he's made a statement. He's correcting me. Because what 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 video was it? It's the Wyral HW35E.177 vlog. It's the vlog. So I was talking about Droop. Yeah. Um, So I am going to correct him back. The correction? Him back. I'm going to correct the correction. So in lieu of this question, I actually made three phone calls. I called Wyral. Not in lieu of. That's not the correct use of that term. I really need a t-shirt that says I'm silently correcting your grammar, um, which is not grammar, it's spelling. In lieu of is instead of. Oh. Um, so as a result of this question. You yeah, in the call. wake of yes. that question, I, I made three phone calls because I wanted to understand barrel droop because there's so much misinformation out there. There's my experience with it, there's this guy's experience with it, and then there's reality, and the reality probably lies somewhere in between. So I called Virau, I called Diana, and I called Crossman. Mm-hmm. And I talked to the people in charge at all three places over product development. And I got three very interesting answers that actually all lined up with one another in their basic answer to the question. When I said, what is barrel droop? Is it deliberate? Is it accidental? You know, what's the deal? Mm-hmm. And they basically said the, all the same thing. They basically all said barrel droop is a living nightmare for air gun manufacturers, whether it's made in Germany or made in China or made in the United States. Because there are so many contributing factors that can cause it, Mm. okay? If um, If the breech block or the barrel is machined a little bit off, it'll cause that that front of that barrel to be down Mm. a little bit. If um, if the locking wedge or ball is in the wrong position, we're talking like thousandths of an inch, a little bit one way or the other, it, it can change that. If the spring tension on the wedge or ball mm-hmm. chain is different in manufacturing, it can change that. In the pivot bolt that goes through that the brake barrel like hinges on mm-hmm. as it goes up and down, if that's off a little bit as far as where they drilled it or its hole, that can contribute to differences in barrel droop, okay? Then all of those things, it gets worse, get aggravated once the gun gets shipped to the owner. Now, wear comes into play. When the wedge starts to wear, when the mating surfaces start to wear, even when the O-ring gets like a little bit more compressed on one end than another from use, you start getting changes in position the bolt pivot starts to wear as you use it. The spring starts to soften behind the ball and behind the wedge. I mean, this is just like pure, all of them were freaking out. This is like pure brain damage. I'm getting the gist. Go pee. pee. Go to the other side of the house so they don't hear your tinkle. I mean, you were right in the middle. (laughs) So, so, and then, and then all of this is exasperated further by when the owner gets it just from this simple act of that compression stroke, if you pull, if you're one of these guys that like monsters that thing and then when you get to the bottom, you have the collision and you're still like driving force in that bad boy, you're slowly bending that barrel and you are also slowly wearing and changing the mating surfaces of all of that dynamic that is in that hinge. So as you own, as you go through your owner's experience, The point of impact can change and that barrel droop can become aggravated one way or the other. If you're the type of person that decocks it and you come up a little bit too quick, 
and that barrel stops, now you're going the other way, not only with the barrel, but with the wear on all of that stuff. So, so apparently it doesn't matter if you're a German engineer or a Chinese scientist, or if you're in New York putting together air guns, this is a living nightmare for brake barrel uh, manufacturers. And to add insult to injury, they also sometimes manufacture barrel droop into the design of the gun to make the gun work with open sights at distances like 20 yards, 25 yards, meters, you know, that kind of thing. So sometimes you'll have it deliberately in there. But by and large, the answer is they are like, they like work super, super hard coming at this thing in all these different angles to, to ensure that the end user doesn't have barrel droop. But that is the answer straight from the mouth of three prominent brake barrel manufacturers. That's quite a demotivator in manufacturing air guns. There's a lot of it's room It's very for hard. Like all of them when I called, they're all like, oh God, yeah, that's a tough one. You know, that's how the conversation started out. You know, we've, we've been fighting and wrestling with that for decades and we still fight with it. And then the gun gets shipped and then everything changed. So it's pure brain damage. It's pure brain damage. Whether you're paying $600 for a Springer or a hundred, it don't matter. Next question. Yeah, Good so many question. so many variables. Good question. Compounded by one another and time and where. We're not really a Forget question. It. That's a runaway freight train. Good topic of conversation. Okay, <sighs> this is from Heath Half Hill. Say that ten times fast. Heath Half Hill. Heath Half Hill. Heath Half Hill. Heath Half, Heath half Full. Yeah, I can't do it. At the post, the half empty. Um, it is. Uh... <laughs> do you have blueberry seed in your teeth? <laughs> do I? I was going to ask yeah, right you. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I tried. you got to spit through it backwards. I can't. I'll try to do this. Well, let me ask you the question, then I'll try to do yeah, this. you got to spit through This it is from your Ask AAC. Oh, hey, this is from our little thing. Yeah. Um, what causes a PCP to shoot at a lower or higher speed than what it is tuned for right after you fill the air cylinder to its full fill pressure? I have the... I have noticed this with really high-end guns and lower-end guns. Is it the regulator or advertising hype with fill pressures like some manufacturers do with ridiculous speeds to sell their guns? Thanks for another great info vid and a little getaway from this lockdown. Take care. Stay safe. God bless. It's physics. And so what it is is you have a regulator that is controlling the air pressure that the valve is seeing. And within that regulator are springs. And then within the valve is a spring and you and the whole way an air gun works inside is you have all these pressures working you got it you have all these pressures and forces working against one another and that gun is set up to work within a range of air pressures and as soon as you exceed that yeah. that air pressure the pressure overwhelms the springs in the regulator and in the valving so that they cannot open and move properly they're under too much force yeah. by the air and that's why when you overfill you'll get low velocity low velocity low velocity then boom and then it'll come up as soon as you get into that area of engineering yeah that um and we're going to get a we're going to get all into that in the tuning guide coming up next week with the uh you are just with, having with yourself a love, love affair, affair with that, that. There 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 there. that's a shit right there that's a bee's Jeez. knees but uh, yeah, I experienced the same thing. It's totally normal and it's simple physics. Manufacturer sets the gun up with certain springs and whatever else to work within a range of pressure. And if you go o over that or under that, you're not going to get the desired results anymore because then you'd have to recalibrate the mechanical guts of the gun to work in that operating pressure. Hmm. Is that everything he asked? Yes. Um, this question is also to another Ask AEC video. It is from Muanlal Srath. Please review Day State Red Wolf. Not a question. Okay. Sure. It's here. Next the one, question. The 177 high power is actually here, which I'm super excited about. I was going to go to the next question and just be like, sure. Next. It's here. Uh, AEAConline.com. <laughs> if you want to know what's, what's here, inbound, what's in the bullpen for immediate review, yeah. just look there. Red Wolf's here, 177 high power. I'm excited. That's okay. going to be a neat, neat gun to to, uh, to do. 
Next question. You're you're in a hurry. Bows. I just want to make sure we're. I mean, we spend a lot of time on show and tell. Well, you can't whoever. brush off the one seven seven thing because our industry is slowly. The air gun industry is slowly. It's taking a big step into ballistics now. Uh huh. With all of these slugs. Yeah. So people are paying close attention to ballistic efficient efficiency speed ballistic coefficient efficiency speed all of these things yeah and i'm very interested to see how a high power 177 slug and maybe monster pellet is going to stack up in that because i'm picturing that being a flat laser beam as long as i can get it moving fast enough and with enough power to not be influenced so heavily by the wind mm -hmm. so this is an this isn't something we glance over this is going to be really this is going to be neat. Glaze over. Gla glazed over. Glaze over. Getting old. Like a glaze. Yeah. You know, because it's really thin layer of something. That makes sense. Yeah. What about a glancing blow? Uh, Glance well, that's over? a glancing blow. Like it almost got you. Huh. Like it kind of got you, but it didn't. Is your pack a sore? Yes. <laughs> okay. Next question. Bose. 150-15. It was posted to an Ask AAC video. It is. What do you got? What do you think about these guys that review PCPs and the first thing they do is take it apart to change or adjust the gun's performance? Question mark. I know what I think about that, but mine is just an uneducated opinion. What do you think about it? I think it's silly. It's kind of like putting hot sauce or cheese all over a dish somebody just worked hard to make for you. <laughs> That's like, a great analogy. Try it first, yeah. and then if you don't like it, do it. Take it apart or put your cheese and hot sauce on it. I mean, I, I got to admit, with this um, Avenger over here, I shot a string. Uh -huh. I didn't take it apart. Like, I don't know why you'd have to take apart a gun, but if I get a gun and I'm a, an experienced air gunner, and I know what ammo works well at what speeds and and I have an idea of what extreme sp spread I need to be effective at a given distance. Yeah. I'm going to I am going to try to massage my new gun to live in that world. Yeah. You know, so I I I don't know about taking it apart, but with this thing I shot one string so I knew how it came out of the box and then I got busy right away making it what I thought it should be. For you guys, and for me, with that AEAC Pro Tune, the AEAC Power Tune, the mm. AEAC Eco Tune, that's how I'd set up the gun for ownership, based on my pool of knowledge. So if, I can kind of, I can kind of understand. I can see that. why they would do yeah. that. I don't know about taking it apart. I can see why somebody would do that if you have like tons of experience, and so it's like your comfort zone to get something and say, okay, I know how this functions best. So let me just put it there instead of spending time wasting time. Yeah, you know where Going you need through, to like get the gun set. to get it to do what you need it to do if you've been around. That all being said, what do you accuse me of being all the time when I take stuff apart? Start, uh, starts with the T. It's a tinkerer. You call me a tinkerer. Yeah, because you all the time. Like, yeah. Just mess with it like 20 million times. Yeah, so part of the appeal to is, being an air gunner. Is the fun tinkering It's part. fun to take stuff apart and tinker with them. You know, you can pull yeah. them apart and you can... Polish transfer ports and polish lead-ins on breaches. I think you might lose something, you though. You can polish chamfers for springs and stuff, like in spring guides. But in tinkering something with something right out of the gate, I think you may lose something. You lose, like, the opportunity to learn and be surprised. Well, absolutely. Without a doubt, you, um, I would recommend trying the gun first to see what it has to offer because you can learn something that you don't know. Like, what was an example of, a perfect example was that Hatsan Neutron Star that I reviewed a couple of months back. I mean, that thing was shooting slugs at 1,000 feet per second accurately at 50 yards with no corkscrew. 1,020 feet per second? Yeah. WTF, man. I mean, that was like news to me. You'll find, you'll find nuggets like that. Yeah. That, that wake you up to a whole new realm of air gun learning i will say that as i've gotten like as i've gotten older i've gotten cockier but not on purpose like you just know what you know you get more sure-footed yeah you get more sure-footed but i think that also closes the door on that like curiosity and innocence and ability to learn yeah you know it really does hinder 
it really does hinder that process. It does. It's important to, it's important to always be open to new learning, new growing. Yeah. Um, just be open-minded. That's make sure you comment about being open-minded. That your cup's not always full because yeah. there are better ways and better things and better products. And yeah. we can learn from one another, which is the whole point of AEAC. Yeah. Both channels. Yeah. Life lesson. Life lesson. Okay. This next question is from Jean Miller, also posted to an Ask AEAC. I am retired Army of 25 years. Thank you for your service, Jean. And you are the best Thank reviewer you. ever. Can you review... <laughs> Can you review the Air Venturi Avenger regulated PCP, please? Yes, yes, we can. <laughs> you mean this one? Yes, Gene. Gene, buddy. Get the gun, okay? I got, that's all there is. I got I got two words for you. Buy the in, gun, that's three. Instagram. That's one word. Facebook. That's one word. I said two words. Oh, I see. Get comfortable with it. Here's the big thing, guys. I love doing Instagram because it brings you in on my learning day to day. If I learned it in that hour or moment, it's on Instagram for you. It does. It's really annoying. There's no waiting. Not um, annoying for you. It's annoying for me. But as I go, you go, and you're in on it. That's the beauty of it. If yeah. you are older and are uncomfortable with it, don't be. It's an app for your phone. It's a picture app. That's yeah. all it is. I can put picture with yeah. tech notes there for you, and I can. And if you subscribe to my Instagram and only my Instagram, right. you will only get pictures and right. tech notes from me and nobody else. Right. It's not like Facebook where you have all of the commercials and garbage and bloatware. Well, Instagram and... has commercials. I just bought some shampoo yesterday because of a commercial. I, mine doesn't. I'm a little bit of a shampoo freak. Well, I take that back. If you If you subscribe to like 500 people and you're scrolling through those 500 people, you'll see commercials. Yes. But if, yes. Right. But if you just subscribe to one dude or one gal, then you're, you're only going to get content from them and you're not going to have all that other BS. So I don't know that that's true so because be Instagram puts the commercials in there. I mean, they got to pay for Instagram. Well, even then, it's like not they put like... they the advertising posts. All right. So but it's not accessible maybe by I, any Yeah, means. maybe I stretched. It's not Facebook. And that's why I love yeah. it for this. Yeah. It's literally show and tell. It's simple. It's quick. It's efficient. And you learn as I learn, and if you have been subscribing to me there, and to the 4,253 it is today, I think, that do. Yeah, that's um, nice. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're learning as fast as I learning. You're not waiting for the videos. And you'd know that I just, today is day 11. Yeah. With this here. Do and it. I have tons of information up there. Now is a really great time to clean up your Facebook and Instagram because it's getting towards election. Everybody's going to have a lot of opinions. Just go ahead and condense it down to only the things that make you happy. Yep. And I've done it I've done it on Facebook too because some people like Facebook and on Instagram. I yeah. put kind of recaps, light-handed recaps on Facebook. By far the bulk of the information is on Insta. Insta Instagram. Instagram. It's a better platform for Instagram. it. Instagram. Next we'll be on TikTok. We will not. I don't know anything about TikTok. I feel like I just caught up with Instagram. Anyway, last question. This is from Emilcar Bacala. This is was posted to your Beeman R9.22 blog. Hello. Hi. Hi. What is the brand of those patchworms? Also, the brand of the cleaning patches. Where can I buy them? Thanks. What you said Hit me that. up on Instagram and Facebook and you will know. Stop. What is it? <laughs> or watch any of the videos. What is it? It's a company called 2020 Concepts. 2020 Concepts. Yep. Dot com? Yeah, it's something like that. Just if Google you Google it. 2020 Concepts Patchworm, it'll pull right Yeah. Out. 2020 Concepts, comma, Patchworm. Yeah. Best $8 you ever spent. What is, uh, is that the brand? 2020 Concepts? Uh-huh. Mm. They sell all sorts of cool stuff. And The, the and owner's name is George. Very they, nice guy. And they have the patches there too? Yeah, he's the invent owner inventor of Patchworm. That's cool. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Does he sell on Amazon? I don't know. That would be probably... I've never actually had to buy it. That... <laughs> That's actually not true. I ordered from him like three years ago, four years ago. And then for the last like two years, he's been sending me stuff. And then for complimentary, of course. And then um, very recently, he became a sponsor. We should find out if he sells on Amazon because for people that aren't in the States, 
it would probably be a lot maybe maybe less expensive or more well efficient. they can they can go to amazon and look up patchwork they can do some work do you have a phone i've done my work do you have a phone no okay i'm gonna i want to go i'm gonna go i'm gonna go <laughs> i'm gonna go render this video for them i'm gonna go i'm gonna go <laughs> Uh, okay cool thanks for coming yep have a great weekend sorry it took so long to get you one of those yeah one of these ask aecs been very very it's been like father's day weekend then it was something else well i spent a couple weeks on the air venturi avenger yeah i broke not avenger uh eagle claw yeah you broke i broke those. i broke two of them yep taking them apart <laughs> Not their fault. That I broke. That doesn't happen. I totally often. broke them. That actually has never happened. That was the first. That time. was the first for me. I broke yeah. two. Um, but th we'll circle back around and then then start on this. So it's been four weeks. I've been in this weird place. Yeah, yeah. But, but thanks, th thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. For coming Hope back. y'all are doing good. Yeah. I'll see you next week. I'm sure on the vlog with the Avenger here. Yeah. And then over on AEAC Home with a full review of it. Yeah. And then we start all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Be safe. Definitely be safe. Wear your masks, kinda, maybe.